welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Madison. I am a first year, second grade teacher, and I'm so excited to have you here following along with my journey. I have been documenting all the ups and the downs of my first year teaching and having my own classroom. Um, today's video I'm super, super excited about because by far one of the most asked questions I get over on my Instagram and on my YouTube channel is what do I need for my classroom as a first year teacher? And I totally get it. As a first year teacher myself, I was stressing all summer. I didn't know what I needed or what was just a want. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I was well prepared for my first year teaching. And so I get that question almost daily. And I'm hoping that this video will be really, really helpful for those of you who are going into teaching, who are becoming first year teachers, or even for those of you who are maybe just curious um, what else you need in your classroom if you're already teaching. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to start off my first teacher must have item. It's one of my most beloved items. <laughs> this is my scotch laminator. Now I heard a lot of people saying that you need a laminator as a first year teacher and I never actually thought I needed one. I was always unsure if it was actually something that I really needed or if it's just something fun to have, but after I started decorating my classroom, I realized I definitely did need one of these. Um, I do not have a Cricut, so a lot of teachers are super fancy and they have Cricuts, so they can print out all of their letters and decor and labels out on a Cricut, and it's super fast and easy, and people always ask me how I got my letters printed off, like those big ones up there. And honestly, I just printed them out and I cut them out individually and sent them through a laminator. So it was very time consuming, but I didn't have to pay for a Cricut. So I used this bad boy so, so much um, over summer, preparing for my classroom, decorating my classroom, and this guy literally laminated every single thing that you see in this classroom. And they're definitely not that expensive at all. I will have my laminator that I have linked down below if you would like to grab one for yourself. My next teacher must have is some sort of supply caddy. Now you'll see a reoccurring theme in this video is organization. I think it's so important to be organized as a first year teacher, whether that's with papers or data or student information or school supplies. So um, I use a lot of things as a, a teacher on a daily basis. So I use a lot of flare pens, pencils, markers, sharpies, highlighters, scissors, you name it. So I actually got this supply caddy from the Target dollar spot over summer. I don't know if they will have these um, at the Target dollar spot next summer or not. However, I'm sure you can get them off Amazon and I will find a very similar one and link it down below. But this has helped me stay organized and I don't need a million different pencil holders up on my desk. I can just keep this one thing on my desk and it keeps me super organized. Next up. This may sound kind of silly as like a first year teacher must have, but I am so glad that I have this. This is a milk crate. I got this milk crate from, I believe, Walmart. Um, you can also buy them off Amazon or Target has them. I will link, of course, some milk crates down below that you can purchase for yourself. But I have two of these milk crates and this one I use for student mail. The other one I use for student data. And basically I just purchased some of these file folders, the hanging file folders off of Amazon. On. I'll link some down below as well and I just labeled them with student numbers as you see here and I store all of my student information in here um, any mail that needs to be sent home in their Friday folders I put in here that way I can easily grab their file folder pull it out and put it in their Friday folder and um, the other one that I have is for student data so any tests or any important data that I get back um, per student I can put in their file folder and keep it nice and organized I am sure many of you guys have seen this next item all over Instagram or YouTube. Many teachers have this teacher toolbox. Um, it's really just like a supply toolbox that you can buy off of Amazon. Mine is pretty big as you see. I will link my exact one that I have down below. Um, but I love this thing. Again, this was another thing I heard people talking about and I was like, do I really need that? But yes, I am so glad I have it and you'll be so glad that you have it too. This stores everything that I need. Like I said, I feel like teachers use so many different things on a daily basis. Staples, glue, tape, push pens, you name it. Um, so this holds all of it and it's just these little drawers. And no, you don't need to um, 
label them all cute like I did, but you can find some really cute toolbox labels on TPT that you can download, and I will link the one that I had purchased down below. This and next must have as a teacher is binders. Now, I have many binders and I use them all. I have a few binders for parent communication, I have a sub binder, a binder for important forms, and this just keeps me really organized <laughs> throughout the year. Um, I have a small group binder. Basically, anytime I have a spare binder, I find something to use it for because there's always information coming in as a teacher. If you're a teacher, you know you're getting so many papers a day, so many emails a day, um, so many messages, and so it's super hard to keep track of, but this I found is an easy way to keep track of all that information that's constantly flowing in. So definitely get yourself some binders, folders, some type of organization system to store all that information. All right guys, this is probably my number one top item that you guys need to have. This is a 15 drawer rolling cart. And I got this off of Amazon. I will link the one I have down below. And this bad boy holds everything that I need. I labeled it for Monday through Friday plans and papers. I have a miscellaneous drawer, a drawer for papers to grade, to file. And it just really, really comes in handy. I use this every single day. It keeps my weeks organized if I have anything that I need to grade or file or print I can just keep them in these drawers and yeah this is probably my number one thing I tell people to get it is one of the more pricey objects <laughs> that you can get as a first year teacher but I promise it will come in handy and you will get a lot of use out of it big tip whenever you are buying items for your first classroom make an amazon wish list and send it out to all family and friends i promise you there are people out there who want to help teachers who want to support teachers in their first classroom especially so definitely do that i got many of these items from family and friends i did not have to purchase them myself so definitely make an amazon wish list if you are needing some help to buy some items for your first classroom Next item that you need, you don't need this exact thing that I have, but my main tip is just to have organizational bins. So that is something that I really took seriously this summer. I bought a lot of different organizational bins. I knew that I'm the type of person that everything needs to have its place in my classroom and I want to know where everything is. I don't want just things thrown in a cabinet or thrown in a drawer. And things like this really help me out. This is just a three drawer cart from Target. I'll link it down below if I can find it. And this is where I store my kids' reading mats, Friday folders, and papers for Friday folders and things like that. So this definitely comes in handy. I know where things are where to grab them my kids know where things are to grab them and yeah things like this really help me out as a teacher if they're organized and labeled and everything has its place next up is anchor chart paper I have a lot of anchor chart paper I have collected quite the stash but it's because I use it daily um, and it really is something that gets used all the time in my classroom so I put a lot of anchor chart paper on my Amazon wish list and a lot of people sent me some so I'm so so grateful for those of you who sent me anchor chart paper because I use it every single day I have anchor charts hung up all over my classroom for my kiddos to see and I just love using anchor charts to display what we We've learned in the classroom and as a review for kids um, to look up and see whenever they are taking tests or whenever they just need help on a problem so anchor charts are super important especially I feel like in primary grade levels but they really go all the way up through elementary school and yeah definitely get yourself some anchor chart paper so that you can make cute anchor charts and this stuff can be expensive so definitely put it on your Amazon wish list um, so people can help you out and support your first classroom all right guys, this is a newer item that I just purchased. This is my small group three-tiered rolling cart. Now, is this 100% necessary? Do you need it? Probably not. But this is a recent purchase that I have realized I cannot live without. It helps me so much stay organized and just helps me out during my small group time. So in my small group cart, I have everything that I need for any small groups. So um, whiteboard markers, erasers, pencils, pens, um, leveled reading text. I have some reading buddies, whisper phones, magnetic tiles. 
I have at the bottom my math section, so I have some dry erase charts, some um, hundreds charts, and math manipulatives. And overall, I just love having everything that I need for my small groups in this cart, and I can easily pull it up to my table whenever I'm working with students. So this was awesome to have this year. I believe I got this cart from Michaels, but I know you can get them all over the place, so I will link one of these carts down below. Now this was another really recent purchase that I realized I will never live without again. <laughs> I had purchased some of these seat sacks or seat caddies for my students' chairs. So this is used to um, hold different books or supplies for kids on the back of their seats. And this has been so helpful. I didn't realize how badly I needed one of these until a couple weeks into the school year when I realized our transitions from the carpet to their cubbies to their chairs was just taking so much away from our instruction time. So I decided I need something where they can just go straight to their seat and get out their books without having their books crowding all over their table all day. So these seat sacks are actually from the dollar store. So um, I will link these exact ones down below. They are obviously super cheap. They're only a dollar or 24 of these seat sacks, it's only $24. Um, so they're not the best quality, but seat sacks can be so, so expensive. So if you just want to try out using seat sacks like I did, I bought these from the dollar store and so far they've held up pretty well. I think I only had one break so far. Um, and so for me, they're working out, but obviously you can buy other seat sacks that are a little bit more durable. They're just a little bit more pricey, but you can also add them to your Amazon wish list if um, you need some help. I love these. I'll never go back. It makes our transition time so much smoother and go so much faster when they can go straight to their seat, grab their books or whatever supplies they need out of their seat sack and put it on their table. So I definitely recommend getting some of these. Last but not least, and this is very important, get yourself some Jolly Ranchers. Not just for you, but for your kids. Because I have learned, and if I have learned anything while teaching, kids will do anything for a Jolly Rancher. And it's so true. I also have a goodie box down here. This is just a tub that I got from the dollar store. And I use candy as an incentive. And that may be a taboo topic to talk about. And people say, don't use candy as an incentive. But guys, one Jolly Rancher is not gonna hurt. Um, every day I do a teacher versus students game with my kids and it's just an incentive for them to have good behavior, to um, be responsible and respectful in the classroom, and to use their best effort in the classroom. So at the end of the day, if they beat me, meaning they get more points than me, then they each get a Jolly Rancher at the end of the day. That's it. Super simple. All they get is one Jolly Rancher at the end of the day as they walk out the door and guys, I have never won. I have never had to give myself too many points in the classroom because these kids want Jolly Ranchers. Now, this goodie box I use a little bit differently. The goodie box I use for my student of the week. So every week at the end of the week, I choose a student of the week and it's someone who was just doing a great job being a role model for the class and um, they get to wear a little badge, they get a certificate and they get to pick from my goodie box. So a goodie box is always great to have in the classroom. It's great incentives for kids. They get so excited about the littlest things, so it never hurts to have a little backup. Obviously, yes, don't only use extrinsic rewards for motivating good behavior. Use intrinsic rewards as well. But it never hurts to have something like candy or a goodie box to motivate those kiddos. All right, guys, I know that was super quick. Um, I didn't have a ton of first year must haves because, guys, at the end of the day, you don't need a ton of stuff. Um, I could have showed you everything in my room be like, oh, I love this. I love this. You need this. But at the end of the day, you don't need a pretty tapestry. You don't need really pretty furniture or pretty bookshelves. You don't need sparkling twinkle lights, right? You don't need any of that stuff. I personally get so much enjoyment out of decorating my classroom, making it super homey for my kiddos. So that is why I do it. But you do not need a fancy, pretty classroom to be a good teacher. So at the end of the day, these are just things that I have found are really helpful for me and that I have loved having in the classroom, you will be a great teacher without these things. So you do not need these things to be a good teacher. Just a disclaimer, because I know I'm gonna get one of those comments, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for some of you who are becoming a teacher or going to their first year of teaching next year. It's such an exciting time. Enjoy it. This year has been 
full of ups and downs, but amazing nonetheless. And I've learned a lot already, just how the year end. And I can't wait to share more with you guys as I continue my teaching journey and as I learn even more. Thank you so much for those of you who have been following my journey and giving me so much support. I want to give back to you guys as much as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And I know a lot of you guys watch my videos, but you're not subscribed. So please hit that subscribe button down below. It really supports my channel and lets me know what videos you are interested in watching. And other than that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.